Hi! Welcome to the first video in a new mini-series I am doing on the plotting devices that basically saved my writing. I know I say a lot of things basically saved my writing, but it's true! I don't know why I'm... I guess I'll be pointing with a chapstick today, or maybe I'll grab a pen. It's true! because I, my writing was in danger for a little bit. Just because I didn't feel super motivated, I didn't feel like things were going anywhere, I didn't feel confident in what I was doing. And so I stumbled upon this little writing secret and every once in a while I start to think foolishly that I know a lot about writing. And then I don't. And I learn something new that reframes my entire career. So we are going to be talking about scenes, sequels, and MRUs, or as they're better known probably, motivation reaction units. I like to call these three things the base ingredients because, or, or like the foundation, right? In the bones of a story, you know, you go through the plotting process and you, you think about what you want this dish or house to be. <laughs> I should really pick one of these metaphors, but I'm not going to. So the plotting process is all about looking at how you want this thing to end up or drawing out the blueprint or writing down the steps and the ingredients, right? And scenes, sequels, and MRUs are the very first action. Like when you are laying the foundation for a house, that's what this is. It's the very, very beginning, that very, very base thing that's going to set you up for success in the rest of your story. So let's get into it. There are so many good ways to write a scene. I'm not saying this is like the end all be all, the Bible of like scene writing, but it is what helped me make my stories so much better. So that's why I wanted to share it with you. I will be talking later about other ways you can map out your scenes, but this is one of my favorites. So it's where we're starting. Also, it's very bare bones. Like it's literally three steps, three steps to a scene. Obviously, once you break it down and you start adding details, there's a lot more than that to a scene, but this is what you're gonna use to build off of. To me, what makes up a good scene? A good scene is defined by characters taking action and running into problems. I mean, that's kind of what a story is, really. If you look at stories, that's really all they are. It's just a series of characters making decisions, taking action, running into issues, making another decision, <laughs> taking more action, running into more issues, and it gets bigger and bigger, usually. So when I say this is how you can plot a good scene, that's what I'm going for. And it's three steps. Are you ready? Here they are. Goal, conflict, disaster. That's it. That's how you write a scene. I could end this video right now because that's just how you write a scene. But let's let's break it down a little more. So obviously in your book, your character has like this big overall goal, right? Like your plot is all working towards this one thing that your character thinks is gonna solve their problem. And if you haven't checked out my story circle video yet, links up there, go look at that because I talk there about finding that big main goal and tying it to your character's want. And when you do those things, these scenes are gonna end up so much better. But that's not the goal we're talking about. We're not talking about the big overall goal. We're talking talking about a little goal of a scene. Have you ever heard that quote that says, um, I don't remember who says it. I, I just realized how many times I quote people without knowing who they are. It says, every character in a scene should want something, even if it's just a glass of water. So that's our goal, right? We're breaking it down real simple into this one scene. What does this character want? Do they want to get to the store? Do they want to plan a party? Do they want to run away from the police? That one's mine, if you couldn't tell. That's the goal for the scene, right? So then they run into this conflict. So let's take the running from police example because that's from my story and I'm very familiar with my story right now because I've been writing it for years. Um, <laughs> so the goal is to run away from the police. You're not thinking about the future. You're not thinking about next week. You're thinking about right now, I have to run away from the police. Conflict pops up like the freeways closed. I can only drive in the neighborhoods or the tire popped and now I am running from the police with a flat tire. Or it could be something like a bullet grazed my skin and now I'm bleeding and I have this injury that I need to like make sure I don't bleed out but I'm running from the cops. Or if you're not in a car, there's stuff on the forest floor that's tripping you. They're running faster than you are. There are bullets flying through the air. All kinds of things can be conflicts. It's just like a little trip and that's a really like kind of intense one. So let's take the, the party example, right? Your character wants to plan a party. Conflicts 
could be the band canceled or the main character is stuck in traffic and running late and they're so nervous about this party going right, right? So you just put little things in their way over and over. And as they're going, they have this goal in mind, right? So they're readjusting every time something comes up. Every time there's a new thing in their path, they're like, Ugh, course correct over and over again. But it's little course corrections. And then you get to the disaster. So if we take the police example, the disaster could be that all of a sudden there's a storm. It starts raining and you're trying not to hydroplane on the road. Or it could be that the character is driving too fast and they flip the car. Maybe someone in the group gets injured, someone they care about, and then they have to worry about that person while they're running from the police at the same time. This disaster is big. It has repercussions. For the party example, maybe you're writing a cute contemporary romance and the main character's love interest cancels. They're putting on this whole big party to impress this person and all of a sudden they're not coming. Maybe it's an outdoor party and again, it starts raining. Maybe just the traffic keeps them from getting there on time and they miss the window of time that their love interest is there. The entire world, the entire goal is not in the balance, but a piece of it is. A piece of the character's world is in the balance, just hanging there and disaster strikes and it makes it seem like the cord is cut, that thing's falling. That character's not gonna get that little goal that's gonna amount to the big goal. So those are the basic fundamentals of a good scene. Goal, conflict, disaster. Your character is aiming for something that's ultimately gonna play into the bigger goal. They keep running into little hangups along the way and eventually there's a big hangup that either hits them physically, emotionally, mentally, however, and leads them into a sequel, which we will go over next week. Sequels are so fun. I love sequels. I'm so excited to talk about them. I will see you next week with those. Remember, a scene is about goal, conflict, disaster. Your character wants something, runs into problems, everything blows up in their face. And disasters don't always have to be this big, huge, like atom bomb explosion. They can be just little disasters that feel so disastrous to that person. There is an art to finding a balance between making the disasters big and small. Don't think that every disaster has to be this like life ending, course altering thing. It doesn't. Disasters just have to be something that causes a sequel, which consists of the character reflecting, analyzing, and learning. So the disaster is just something that gets in the way of the goal and propels the character into assessing what happened and learning from it. So there you go. That's how you can write a good scene. Very simple, very bare bones, like I said. And I will see you next week with how to write a good sequel. Happy trails.